Hello, history fans. Welcome to our next document discussion. A uh, pretty short one today. Yes. Today, we just have one little cute document. Uh, I'm kidding. It's long. <laughs> Uh, but it's just one document. Huey Long, Every Man a King, and Sure Are Well. So let's talk about Huey Long. Huey Long was a really wild guy, really wild politician. He's like one of those guys who starts frothing at the mouth. Like he's when he talks, he's famous for wearing bright purple suits. Um, <laughs> that guy. He is at the time governor and then later a, a senator from Louisiana. Louisiana, historically a pretty poor state. Huey Long uh, and others were part of a, an informal group called Thunder on the Left. So in our document, or I'm sorry, in our lecture video, we had talked about how FDR, Franklin Roosevelt, president during the Great Depression, he has this new deal on all of these programs that are trying to help alleviate some of the pressure and some of the stress that Americans are suffering during the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. And, and they do a lot. Uh, they do a lot for a lot of people. Huey Long, however, governor of Louisiana, historically a pretty poor state, he says, hey, FDR, love you, love your New Deal. It sucks. <laughs> it's not doing enough. Uh, Huey Long and others are pointing out that there are real important groups of people that are left out of the New Deal, that there are, there are no New Deal programs to help, for example, in Huey Long's case, the poorest Americans, the poorest of the poor need extra help. There are people who are literally starving to death uh, during the Great Depression, who are homeless, they need extra help and they need it now. So Huey Long, uh, part of that group, Thunder on the left, who is saying the FDR and his New Deal need to do more. So. Here is, like I said, uh, kind of it's kind of two speeches together. Every man and king, I'm sure, are well. We're gonna move through these pretty quickly. The first page, first couple of paragraphs, right out the bat, he says, "We hold." He quotes the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident. There are certain inalienable rights for the people among them: life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. It said further, "We hold the view that all men are equal." Why does he say that? Why does he bring up these immortal statements right off the bat? He said, they're not, we're not living up to that. <laughs> That's not our current reality. We're not living up to that, and we should. We should do more to make that a reality for every American citizen. You know, even in the Great Depression, America is overall, by and large, is, is relatively speaking, a wealthy country. We can let our people survive. We have a promise. We need to make up, live up to it. On the third, or sorry, on the second page, fourth paragraph down, he says, now my friends, oh my friends, if you were off on an island where there were a hundred lunches, you wouldn't let one man eat up the hundred lunches. You wouldn't take the hundred lunches and not let anybody else have any. Why does he talk about lunch? <laughs> what's, he, what's he saying here? Well, two things. First, it's, uh, it's an easy way, it's an easy metaphor to talk about wealth inequality. He's talking about wealth inequality here in most of these paragraphs. He says that there are still wealthy people in the depression and they should be bearing the burden of taxation. Not poor people. Poor people are trying to buy groceries <laughs> and, and they're, they're trying to be lunch and they can't. So second thing, he's talking about lunch because it's something that's on everybody's mind um, because they don't have it, they're, they're hungry. It's an easy metaphor, it's an easy way to talk about wealth inequality, and that's something that's on everybody's mind. There are still wealthy people in the Great Depression. They're a lot less wealthy than they were, perhaps. <laughs> but they, they're still living there in their mansions, and they're still eating their four-course meals, and, and they're, they're okay. Um, meanwhile, in Louisiana and other places, there are people who are homeless and starving. So... Huey Long talking about wealth inequality here. Let's flip pages again onto the share our wealth section number two. This is where he kind of gets one and two, but mostly in two. This is where he gets kind of most striking. He has, he comes up with, Huey Long comes up with this share our wealth plan. 
And here is where he talks about it. I'm going to paraphrase because that he's kind of wordy. <laughs> but it's mostly like written in, in numbers one and number two there uh, under the share our wealth part of the speech. So paraphrasing here, what is he wanting to, to do with this share our wealth? He comes up with all of these numbers and they're all based on the average. And he says, we should be able to guarantee that the uh, that families have one third of the average, which is $2,000 per year. What's important about that statistic? Think back to our lecture video. Right before the depression hit, $2,000 was the amount that an average American family afforded needed to subsist, to survive. So you have a house and you have food and that's it. No extra basic survival, subsistence. $2,000 to subsist. He says, okay, America's a wealthy country. We should be able to guarantee that all of our citizens can survive. <laughs> they should. We should be able to guarantee a third of the average, $2,000 subsistence, basic survival. And then he has, so he wants to put a floor on wealth. And then he also has a ceiling on wealth. He says, average yearly income, nobody needs over 300 times, which is like $1.8 million. <laughs> nobody, no family needs more than $1.8 million per year. That's outlandish, he says. That's ridiculous. So if anybody makes over that ceiling, that money is going to be and it will be added to the people below subsistence to get them up to subsistence level. The wealth is going to be shared, right? They take from the wealthy, give to the poor to get them up to subsistence level so that people can survive. We're not talking about thriving. We're not talking about you have a, a great life. You just you're going to not die. You're not going to starve to death. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's it. That's the share our wealth plan. He wants to put a floor and a ceiling on wealth. The floor is subsistence level, $2,000, a third of the average. Nobody needs more than 300 times the average, which is $1.8 million. If you make more than that ceiling, your money will be taken by the government, given to the poorest of the poor Americans to get them up to subsistence level. That's the share our wealth plan in a nutshell. The thing about the share our wealth plan uh, is that it's too radical. <laughs> that is not going to happen. You know, it's a little bit too Robin Hood, giving, taking from the wealthy to give to the poor is a little bit too radical for, for Americans uh, to really get behind. But there is an acknowledgement. What Huey Long does get is there's an acknowledgement that there are still wealthy people in America and they should bear the burden of taxation because the poor people need to keep money in their pockets to pay for groceries and to keep their home and pay their just basic essential bills like that. They need to be able to survive. And a lot of people in the Great Depression are not surviving. So even though the share our wealth plan never happens, even though uh, that particular <laughs> plan doesn't, doesn't fly, uh, Huey Long does get a lot of people talking about his ideas. He does get a lot of recognition for the problems facing the poorest of the poor Americans. And the thing about the thunder on the left is that it works. <laughs> FDR listens to the criticism and uh, his reaction to Huey Long is the Wealth Tax Act of 1935. 1935's Wealth Tax Act, which redoes the tax bracket so that the wealthiest Americans are paying 75%. <laughs> They're taxed on their, their income rate is 75%. 75% of their income is taxed. That's a lot. That's a lot. Way higher than it is now. I don't have the numbers now, but it's like in the tens. Uh, so <laughs> there is an acknowledgement that wealthy people are still exist in America. And they are the ones who need to bear the burden of taxation, not poor people, because poor people are concentrating on not starving death. So that's it for Huey Long. I told you it's going to be easy. Love it. Have a good rest of your day. Don't work too hard.